welcome to the Nemo basement, which I cleaned up. Look at all the space, that was full of crap. This was entirely full of crap, cleaned it up. Left it here for the drill though. Don't watch that. Here's some more space I cleared out. All full of shit. So now we can actually continue work on the BMW. What we're gonna do today is make uh, this bracket that you can see here. It's uh, for under the seats. I already made one for the left side. Still needs some work as you can see. It goes right under here. If I can wiggle it in with one hand. Come on. There you go. So that's where it will live. It will get welded there. Uh, we'll give it some holes to make it look cool. So yeah, the right side still needs one, so let's get to it. This clip was filmed with my old phone, so it looks like it was filmed with a Nintendo DS, but I swear it wasn't. Anyway, the way we made this bracket was we made it out of cardboard first. That's what you do with brackets. We got the rough shape in this way, and then transfer it to the metal later. I really struggled with getting out this basic shape. First I wanted to use the grinding wheel with the edge of the table, but that was unsafe and meant holding it with one hand. The vise didn't work either, couldn't really reach it, felt really unsafe. But then I remembered we had this guy laying around. Plates for steel, that's exactly what we need. Next, it's onto the grinding wheel to finish it up. Look, I just got the letter on Friday, and I didn't know how to tell you. I'm really happy for you. Okay. Remember, kids, wear protection. Let's see how it fits. And the answer is... Hmm, it doesn't really need some more work on the grinder, though. I'm gonna do that off camera because it's just grinding and fitting and grinding and fitting over and over and over again until it's perfect. I hate this sort of work, I absolutely despise it, but it needs to be done, it's the only way to make it fit. You can see the difference here between the left and the right side, and while it's very unlikely that they will end up identical, you can see that the difference is quite large. I started on drilling through the stainless, but because of the drill bit being quite blunt, this took ages. Uh, I'm sick of it, so I'm gonna try sharpening the drill bit. I've never done this before, but I hope that it will speed up the process. As you can see, it took me a couple of tries, but I eventually got a nice point on it. Not too shabby, I think. Yes, I filmed this in the wrong orientation like a complete noob, but at least the drilling went a bit quicker. A bit. Next we need to bend this 90 degrees, just like the other piece on the other side. Now to do this, I trace the line of the left bracket onto the right bracket, but I'll just check if it matches with the bike. And the answer is, no it doesn't. Not at all. Not even remotely close. Which just goes to show how aligned everything is on this bike. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not. So after redrawing the line, it's time to start bending it, or at least try. Now I'm gonna clamp it in the vise using this insert, I'm not sure which metal it is, but it's soft metal in every case. You can put this in the vise um, so you don't damage the workpiece you're working on. As long as it's not softer than the soft metal, of course. Now, let's get to bending. <laughs> I did this the ghetto way, just bending it with bare hands with some wood with a hammer. As you can see, we're getting along, but not quite there yet. There you have it, 90 degree angle. 
get this out of the vise and let's see if it fits. What do you think? Not perfect, but we can work with this. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Check. Now, of course, the seat needs to be closed at the bottom as well. And that's where this shiny plate comes in. <laughs> Would you look at that? It goes on here. Well, it goes under there, actually. But for now, for uh, you see here, drew the outline here. So for the fitting, we're going to put it on top. Same thing. You see, it has a little bent already, but there's still a lot of work to shape this to the shape it needs to be. A few moments later. Hmm. Two hours later. Six and a half hours later. Seventy two hours later. After many, many hours, you can finally see the vision. These cardboard pieces will eventually be replaced by some sort of plastic PMMA transparent stuff with the light behind it so you can see the light but it's fancy. I'm planning on laser cutting these parts and in order to laser cut them of course the laser cutter needs to know where to cut so you need to draw them. Uh, I'm lucky that I have access to SaltWorks which is a 3D CAD program but there are free alternatives available like SketchUp for instance. Um, so I'm just gonna draw them in here and then the end result should be a PDF file with the correct line thicknesses and colors uh, that you can send to the laser cutter and then he will just cut along those lines. Unfortunately I lost the footage of the laser cutter but this is what you end up with. If you really want to see it you can just look it up on YouTube there's plenty of clips of it. So you get this PMMA confetti. Uh, I have some black grayish ones for the daylights, the breaking lights, and then orange for the blinkers. And this was the moment I decided to bend this ID. The whole setup with the PMMA was just too flimsy and wouldn't have worked. Unfortunately, that also means that the metal pan is trash. Or is it? Before I toss it, I wanted to use it for an experiment. I have two types of brushes. A steel brush and one, pff, I don't know, nickel or something, brass. Softer one. I want to check which one is the best to polish this uh, steel plate. So we're gonna do a little test. I don't know if this properly shows on camera, but you see the sh sort of shiny spot at the right that the light is reflecting in now? That's the soft brush. So as you can see, it did give it a nice shine, but it didn't took off any of the stains or really polished it up. On the left side, on the other hand, that's the steel brush. You can see it took really the oxidation of the surface and it gave it a nice clean metal finish, but there's a lot of scratches in there, which I don't really want. So I think what I'll end up doing is using the steel brush first and then going over it with the softer one to uh, get rid of the scratches. I think that will give a nice finish. So yeah, this trash isn't trash after all, although now it is, I guess. Oh well. I know that most people won't be interested in the next part, so I'm already gonna say thank you for watching, like, subscribe, comment, you know the drill by now. For those that are interested, here's a little bonus clip, a little reality check, I guess. This is the part that YouTube YouTubers mostly don't show, but I wanted to include it because it's just reality. Um, well, little side story. This is the PC I use to edit these videos, um, and one day it decided to stop powering on. Now, of course, my initial thought was the power supply because nothing was lighting up, which it normally does. So I took it out, uh, ordered a new one, replaced it, put it in, didn't do anything at all. 
So after some more research, I figured it was probably the motherboard. And after way more research, I found out that it is still under warranty. Um, so I sent it up, got it fixed, came back, um, put it back in, and it did the trick. However, it was a lot of work to get it out. I have never built this PC. I've never built it myself. Uh, it was done by someone else. So this was my first experience with it. Um, and yeah, it was quite a big job. Everything basically had to come out and thus also go back in, <laughs> preferably working. But in the end, we got there, luckily. So yeah, it's a little extra behind the scenes for you. This is all still new for me, so please, please, please leave me some feedback, good or bad. In any case, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.